So in this video, picking up with number 13 from the review, the setup was explained in that previous video, uh, but we have some slightly different numbers here for this specific problem. So just using the exact numbers to show how to reach the solution. And so the first equation is going to be equal to that new total value for number 13. For the second equation, I've gone ahead and subtracted m to the left side so that we have all the variables on the left. And then our third equation uses the interest rates that are mentioned in number 13 um, and the actual annual income from number 13 as well. So um, going forward from this, what we really want to do is uh, we can just eliminate variables using uh, row operations here. And um, you can really pick which variable you want to start to get rid of. Um, I'm going to do it by getting rid of the m's first from two equations, just, just because there's already a plus m and a minus m. So they'll cancel out if I add those two equations together. So I'm going to take the m out of uh, the top and the bottom equation. So to get rid of it in the top equation, I just need to add that second equation to it. Um, I'll get 2b, 2c, and then 102,000 on the right, and there's no m. To get rid of it here, I first I'm going to have to multiply everything uh, in this equation by 0.1. And so I, I show that down here, everything multiplied by 0.1. And the nice thing is we have a zero on the right side, so it just stays zero. And now when I add those two equations together, that third equation will have no m. And then you, um, you have the new coefficients in front of b and c and that same value on the right. So here are my new three equations. I still have that. Um, that's one of the original ones that I didn't change. And then those two new ones I got by adding, uh, adding those equations together to get rid of the M. So I'm going to proceed working with these two that just have the B and C. And if I can get rid of C by adding them together, then I'll just be left with B, which is actually what we're looking for, how much we should invest in bonds. And so to proceed, there's actually a, a typo right here. There should be, it should be 0.19B like we uh, saw up above. So to get rid of the C's, I need to make these coefficients the same. First, let's multiply this whole entire equation by 100, just so there's no decimals in here anymore. And it will give me this, adds on two zeros to that number on the right and gets rid of the decimals for the two coefficients. And so to make the second equation have a 16, a negative 16 in front of the C, it's negative eight times everything. And so you get, uh, these values with the negative 8 multiplied by everything. And when you add the equations together now, there's 3b equal to 96,000. So now we're set up to solve for b, just dividing both sides by 3, and you get the solution for how much to invest in bonds. And if you needed to find c or m, you could take that value for b, 32,000, and just come back to either one of these equations, uh, the second one's pro or third one here is probably the easiest, plug that value in for B and then you uh, use algebra to solve for what C is. And then once you know B and C, you can plug it in here and solve for what M would be. So uh, that is how you can go about from taking uh, the equations you have and then solving to reach the solution.